A top-ranking Republican senator urging other Republicans to put personal politics aside and get vaccinated. An accused drug trafficker gave up his entire lifestyle to run from the law until his cooking hobby got him caught. Paula. Karen, I want you to try to imagine this, a 12-year-old boy in an emergency room for 26 consecutive days without getting treatment because the resources weren't available. And get this, the hospital says this isn't an isolated incident. I'll explain. We don't need to tell Paula that the wind is out there, but we are so close to 70. Find out how far we're going to be before the weekend. It's all right now, first at four. Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News First at 4 starts now. All right, let's start things off first at 4 with brand new coronavirus data from the state. The state is reporting 5,177 new cases of COVID-19, along with 48 additional deaths. Now, there is some good news involving nursing homes. The group representing more than 14,000 care facilities across the U.S., says nursing homes are seeing a rapid decline in new COVID cases, which are down by 92% since December when the vaccine rollout began. A new University of Michigan survey shows more Detroiters are overcoming their hesitancy to get vaccinated against COVID-19. 38% now say they're very likely to get vaccinated, and that is up when it was just 14% last fall. The Macomb County Health Department announces a new drive through vaccine site in Warren. The site will be at the Warren City Garage located at Warren City Hall near Van Dyke. Starting April 8th, the site will run Thursday to Sunday from 3 in the afternoon to 8 p.m. This will be the county's second drive through site. Officials say the site will have the initial capacity to distribute 2,000 doses a week. Appointments are required. You can make one on the Macomb County website. Oh, tonight's a big night for Michigan basketball as the top seeded Wolverines take on UCLA in the Elite Eight round of the NCAA tournament in Indy. Now, the Maize and Blue are favored by about seven points. Tip off 9.57 tonight. Of course, Bernie will have a full preview of the matchup when you join us here at 5 o'clock. Meantime, let's talk about the forecast and the enjoyable day we had out there today. It sure has been nice, Ben. Yeah, temperatures uh, getting close to 70, Karen. This is going to be the last time we see that until we get it to the upcoming weekend. But you can tell from the uh, tower cam shot here looking out over Belle Isle that there's definitely some winds. Sustained winds have reached 30 miles an hour, but you can see those gusts have topped 40. Temperatures mid to upper 60s. Detroit's at 69. Ann Arbor also at that temperature. Flint's already been to 70 degrees, so there's a good chance that some of us will actually touch that mark before we're done. And you can start to see the rain that's going to approach tonight. So we'll check out the timing on that. But the big story is going to be what happens after the rain. Cold front comes in. Temperatures drop. The winds pick up. And we may be even seeing a few snowflakes there on Thursday. But the weekend is looking better for the bunny. We'll check out Sunday's recovery and how long it lasts in just a few minutes. Karen. All right. Thank you, Ben. The trial of Derek Chauvin, the former police officer accused of killing George Floyd, continues today in Minneapolis. Let's things, send things out to Kimberly Gill. She's in the newsroom. And Kim, get us up to speed on what happened in court today so far. Hi, Karen. Yeah, good afternoon. It's been a tense and emotional couple of hours at the trial. It began with Donald Williams returning to the witness stand. Williams is a former wrestler who said he was trained in mixed martial arts, including chokeholds. Prosecutors played back his 911 call in which he heard telling the dispatcher that Chauvin had been keeping his knee on Floyd's neck despite warnings that Floyd's life was in danger. Here he shares why he called 911 in the first place. I believe I witnessed a murder. And I felt the need to call the police. During cross-examination, Chauvin's attorney pointed out that Williams seemed to grow increasingly angry at police. Williams initially admitted he was getting angrier, but then backtracked and said he was professional. The next witness to testify was an 18-year-old woman. She was not shown on camera because she was underage when she witnessed this incident. Here she describes what she and her 9-year-old cousin saw the day Floyd died. I see a man on the ground and I see a cop kneeling down on him. Was there anything about the scene that you didn't want your cousin to see? Yes. And what was that? A man terrified, scared, begging for his life. Is that why you directed your cousin to go on into Cup Foods? Yes. And, uh, and then 
when you saw what was happening there at the scene, what was it about the scene that caused you to come back? It wasn't right. He was, he was suffering. He was in pain. The defense attorney disputed Chauvin was to blame for Floyd's death. He said Floyd had none of the telltale signs of asphyxiation and had fentanyl and methamphetamines in his system. We'll stay on top of this and keep you posted as we learn more. Karen. All right. Thank you, Kim. First at four, we are on top of stories making headlines across America. In New York, police are looking for the man who viciously assaulted an Asian woman. They are calling the assault a hate crime. This happened in Midtown Manhattan on Monday. In the surveillance video, you see a man walk up to the woman and then kick her down to the ground and continue kicking her in the face. According to police, the attacker also made anti-Asian comments to the victim. The video appears to be taken from inside a nearby apartment complex. It shows onlookers did not react during the result assault. Vaccine hesitancy appears to be dropping, especially among black Americans. More than 1,800 adults were polled back in mid-March. 62% said they were either already vaccinated or will be as soon as possible. That is up from 55% in February. And when it comes to race, 55% of black adults said they had been vaccinated or planned to be soon, which is up from 41% last month. Republicans and white evangelical Christians were the most likely to say they will not get vaccinated. And a top Republican has a message for them. I'm a Republican man. As soon as I was eligible to take the vaccine, I did. And I would encourage everyone to do that regardless of age so that we can get to herd, herd immunity and get this in the rearview mirror. It is worth noting that President Trump did receive the COVID vaccine earlier this year. Senator McConnell also encouraged mask wearing until the pandemic is in check. Also making headlines, Volkswagen is poised to change its name to Volkswagen as it invests in electric vehicles. Now the switch from a K to a T is a nod toward the automaker's plans for EVs. The German automaker's announcement on the change appeared briefly on its media site on Monday before it was removed, having apparently been released before it was ready for an official rollout. Volkswagen declined to comment. Well, for months, school administrators have been sounding alarms about a growing mental health crisis among students who feel isolated and depressed as a side effect of COVID lockdowns and basic life uncertainties. Today, Paula Tutman takes us inside a mother's horror story as she tried to get her son emergency mental health care at a local hospital, which is exposing a huge problem across health care. <laughs> For Leah, it was a desperate situation. Her 12-year-old son, who battles depression after months of remote learning, feeling separation anxiety, and a host of other unmanageable emotions, announced he was ready to end it all. Adding, to, adding COVID and adding all those um, things that, that are different, that lack of routine, definitely made things worse. His parents immediately took him to the hospital for help. Only what they got was an unfathomable extended stay. We were in a, an ER room basically holding and waiting for 26 days before we released him because we couldn't find anywhere for him to go. Um, there are no beds. Every facility is full. There's waiting lists. For 26 days, Leah and her wife and their son lived inside a hospital cubicle inside the emergency room. I spent multiple hours on phone calls um, trying to coordinate social work, calling the um, inpatient facilities, calling outpatient facilities that could provide him partial day care. Lisa Weber is the psychotherapist for Leah's son. A 26 day in an ER hospital is so traumatizing. Weber's concern is that hospitals and healthcare systems are so overloaded with COVID patients, they are ill-equipped to handle the growing chronic and acute mental health needs, particularly of children. You know, they found hospital beds, they put COVID patients in nursing homes, they put them in hospitals. Where is, where are the MASH units for this? You know, hospitals are getting money from COVID. We have all this money from the relief bill that hasn't been spent. We have more money coming in, hasn't been spent. Why aren't some of those funds allocated to get extended facilities, get 24-7 care, 
get people to volunteer if needed. Last Friday, Leah had enough and demanded her son be released from the emergency room, believing the wait for the psychiatric evaluation and referral was doing more harm than good. There's, there were multiple patients in the same situation as my son who have been waiting for weeks and weeks for treatment. There was no treatment, unfortunately, during those 26 days. Um, and I'm not sure it's the fault of anybody other than the fact that there are not the resources available to provide the care to this crisis that's happening right now with our children. You know, there is just so much to unpack here, starting with there just aren't the resources to have those kinds of mass units. Because even if you put something, say, in Cobo Hall, for instance, or the TCF Center, I should say, pardon me, uh, you still have to have professionals able to staff those kinds of places. Now, obviously, the hospital needs to respond to this, and they did. They explained what happened here and why this isn't an isolated incident. And, Karen, that's the story we're working on for you at 6 o'clock. Very important to tune in for this because... It, there's not an easy answer here. It really isn't, but it's such an important topic to talk about and try to find that answer. Looking forward to that report at 6. Thank you, Paula. Still ahead here first at 4. On the run from the law, but not exactly laying low. How wanted man's favorite hobby led cops right to him. Plus, not setting the best example. More than 20 people who work for Japan's health ministry are facing possible discipline for ignoring their own advice about gatherings during the pandemic. Plus, home prices keep going up. We've got eye-popping new numbers putting the current market in perspective.